If you can't get your dog to pay attention on a walk, today I'm going to show you what to do. This episode of the Dog Training Revolution is sponsored by Pet Flow. Click thumbs up for Molly the Rescue Dog. Click subscribe to learn how to teach your dog all sorts of cool things. And pick up a copy of my new best-selling book, Dog Training Revolution. It, combined with my videos, will give you everything you need to know to raise the perfect dog. Elizabeth and her husband Daniel have four rescue dogs. With multiple pets, it's extra convenient to have your dog food automatically shipped to your front door, especially if you have to get different brands or even prescription foods. The solution to this is setting up automatic pet food delivery at petflow.com slash zachgeorge. Just choose your favorite brand of dog food and how often you want it delivered. And then those heavy bags of dog food, well, they're already gonna be there whenever you need them. What I'm saying is you don't have to remember to go to the pet supply store and wait in traffic ever again. I'm gonna have a special link and a coupon code that will give you 20% off of your first auto ship order in the description. Give it a shot and let me know what you think. It looks like Izzy's pretty comfortable right now and she's just the perfect dog, isn't she? She sure is. <laughs> so how has training been going with Molly though? Cause she's got a few more issues we have to kind of work on. Training has been going okay with Molly, although a little inconsistent just due to some scheduling issues. Has Molly had her exercise today as she played fetch? Yes, we played fetch this morning with all the pups. You want to make sure you get your dog's excess energy out before expecting them to retain new and intricate concepts like walking properly on a leash. How does Molly do on a walk typically? Is she good about paying attention to you or not? Not so much. She's very distractible, whether it be another animal, especially dogs and cats. And she's even more difficult to control when we're with our other dogs, especially Chloe. Last time I was here with Molly, I noticed she was very interested in the cats next door and in the streets. So she definitely has that interest in other animals. Regarding her and Chloe walking nicely together on a leash, it'll be really important to get them super solid individually first before we can expect them to walk nicely together. So we'll work with Molly today and in a future lesson, we can work with Chloe and then Chloe and Molly together. When we take a walk with Molly in a little bit, she's gonna be wearing her muzzle because she's not always accepting of strange animals coming up to her. If we hope to make progress on Molly's outburst towards other animals, we have to begin to desensitize her and have her experience what it's like to be around other animals. By having a muzzle on her, we can safely do this. Last time I was here, we worked with Molly on getting her comfortable wearing a muzzle. I'll have a link to that video in the description. Molly looks really enthusiastic about the walk today, so we're gonna get her all suited up and ready to go. Let's see how she does with her muzzle. No, 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 no. You can't just drag your leash, honey. Yes, nice work. You're doing so great. She's going right into that. That's exactly what we want. She's wearing her muzzle happily. Now I think we're ready to get into some leash training. What do you say? There are two major types of walks. Walks where you just go on a normal stroll in the neighborhood to give your dog some exercise and training walks. Today, we're gonna be working on a training walk. See, you can't effectively hope to teach a dog much of anything unless you're prepared to shift gears at any given moment when necessary. Your dog needs your full attention during training sessions like this. There's nothing passive about teaching your dog to walk on a leash nicely. Molly right now thinks we're going on a normal walk. She's really excited. She's already kind of pulling me forward. But before I even proceed with that, I wanna verify that I can get her eyes on me in a familiar setting, like right in front of her house first. So I'm going to assess for that. Look at me, nice work. I'm very happy that I can get Molly to do a basic sit and a look at me like this right here in front of the house. But can I get her to do it while moving on a leash? Yes, up here, good work, come here. Nice work. See, this is how I like to get traction on leash training. Molly, up here, look at me, great job. So you can't hope to proceed down the block if your dog isn't very reliable right here in front of your house first. And here we've gotten a bit of a training gift. A cat has just come over here and she's doing really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of that and really reward her right now for doing a great job around the cat. Let's go take a walk down the block now. When you're on a training walk like this, try and get rid of this mindset that you have to stay on one linear path. By going random like this and changing directions rapidly on your dog, it kind of encourages them to keep their attention on you to see where the walk is headed. Molly, come here. Yes, yes, that's it. That's the glance I'm looking for. And it's not just necessarily back and forth. I'm going across the street now, and I might go back this way now. Let's do a figure eight. That's it, nice work. And see, she's doing a much better job right now, kind of focusing on me, seeing where everything is going, and, and that's what you want at, at this point in your training. Sometimes if you pick your energy up a little bit, your dog is more likely to be more interested in you. So try not to be too boring with them either. Reach deep and find a way to be a little peppy with them to keep them focused on you, if that makes sense. Dogs are social animals and they love it when their people are extra fun. All right, Chubbs, you're doing a great job. 
rather than waiting for your dog to have an outburst to then correct them, focus on giving them a reward when they behave the way you do like. Even though she didn't start barking and lunging towards those bikes right now, I'm not gonna wait for her to do that, to tell her no. I'm gonna take advantage of that and reward her to let her know that I like how she behaved right there. That's where the emphasis of your training really needs to be. As you're reasonably confident that your dog is starting to do well and pay attention to you under moderately distracting situations like simply being outside, then you want to routinely test for willing compliance. What do I mean by that? Well, you wanna ask your dog to sit. Notice she didn't sit right then. Right now, something's got her attention. You can see her sniff in the air. Even when you're using something really good, like real chicken, some dogs will be so distracted that they're not even interested in the chicken because the outdoors or a dog or a cat or any number of other things really can distract them. So you have to work with them through this. Desensitizing them, getting them used to being around a variety of situations is the only valid path that I'm aware of to teach your dog how to behave ideally in these circumstances. I've got to get her attention back on me, even if it means I've got to go all the way back home. That's why this is a training walk. So rather than proceed, I'm going to take a step back over here because I suspect she's more likely to listen to me back here just because it's closer to the house. Sit. Molly, come here. Over here, sit. No. And I'm just gonna keep going back till I get a sit out of her. Sit. And I'm letting her know I have this currency and see she's still not interested in it. Gotta keep going back, come on. Sit. Yes, good girl. All right, so I had to back up a few feet, about 15 feet or so, just to get her back into a sit. I appreciate she's working. It's not yes. just about the treats. Let your dog feel that authentic, positive energy from you too. That's not to say that you should never tolerate tension on the leash when you're walking your dog. Under normal walks, you may have to because sometimes they just need to get out there and sniff around and just be outside. Now, your dog will encounter varying levels of distraction and you'll need to get good about assessing whether or not a particular distraction is too much for your dog or whether you can work through that distraction. And there are a lot of variables that go into that, like how much exercise your dog has received that day, how young they are, how socialized they are, their genetics and overall life experience. If you cannot get your dog to do a basic sit and look at me while around a distraction, then you're too close to the excitement and you need to promptly get away from the distraction until your dog is compliant again. This requires you to test often. Once your dog sits and looks at you again, then you'll know that you're at your working distance. When you succeed at getting your dog's attention on you at will, that's when your communication with them becomes so powerful and that's so much better than any special collar or tool you could ever hope to buy. Sit. Yes. Over here, look at me. All right, see that, this is interesting. She did do a sit, but she didn't look at me. I've gotta get those eyes on me. Doesn't quite count till I can get her eyes. Come here, over here. Up here, yes, that's it. There's those eyes. Look at this loose leash, I love it. It's amazing. Now, the real question is, will we have a loose leash like that when we encounter a dog? Right now, she's pulling towards two other dogs over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here. Come on, no ma'am, let's go. Come on, over here. Sit, see this? Do you see how she won't take the treats right here? That's because she is so focused on these dogs that are walking right now. I can't even push the chicken in her mouth because she wants to get to those dogs over there. I need to get her attention on me. So my goal is to create distance away from the distraction. So I'm gonna go that way right now and get away from those other dogs. That's the thing, come on. Come on, over here, come on, it's okay. And she's got a really high pitched squealer, come on. Yes, yes. Oh, almost, almost, gotta go farther. So I'm still not far enough away from the distraction. I gotta keep going. Now I'm gonna test for compliance over here. Sit, no, nope, still don't have it. Will you sit? Yes, that's it. This is my working distance and right now, those two dogs are probably a half mile down the street. I had to get so far away. That's completely normal when you're having to work through reactive issues with some dogs, so good job. Now I'm gonna try and get back on our normal route and if we encounter another dog, I'll do the same thing if necessary. Oh, I hear a dog over here, I think. And she keeps pulling me towards that fence. I don't wanna go past that fence, at least for this training walk, until I'm, I feel that she's compliant. Because the closer a dog is to something they find very distracting, the less likely they are to listen to you in the presence of that distraction. If I could get her to sit just in this general area, I'd feel great with that. But this is where her attention starts to fade in and out. So it may take several training sessions to work with your dog in a situation like this. Point of compliance is right here at this point. Let me see if I can get her to sit a little bit closer. Sit. Yes, now our point of compliance is a bit closer. I got her to sit and acknowledge me 
just a few feet from the fence here. Really work with your dog through these types of distractions. I'm super passionate about making sure that the public has access to quality dog training information absolutely free. And we can't do it without you. Consider making a contribution of any amount you'd like to our efforts on Patreon. I'll have a link in the description. If you guys think Molly did a great job today, I certainly do. Click thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed, and set up automatic pet food delivery through PetFlow. I'll have all the details and links in the description. Molly, you did a great job. Mwah. Remember to pick up a copy of my new book for the most thorough training experience possible. If your dog is likely to get into altercations with other dogs while in public, or you want to prepare them for the possibility of wearing a muzzle at the vet for, say, an emergency situation, check out my video on teaching your dog to love wearing a muzzle. If you want your dog to respect certain boundaries in the house, see my video with Luca the Lab on that topic. And teaching your dog to bark and or stop barking is tons of fun. See Jacob the Rescue Dog in that video. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much to all of our subscribers and to all of our supporters on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you.